So hello and good Monday. How has your week started? Um, in today's video, we're going to do part two of the performance analyzer. I've um, had the intention to do it last week. I didn't have time, but also I was waiting for the Power BI team to release a more uh, detailed document about the yeah, how the performance analyzer works. It hasn't been released yet, so I will share what I can and we'll wait until they have released that so you know uh, we can do a full full review. But uh, on part one, I show you how the performance analyzer worked, and I told you that you can export a JSON file with all the details so you can really, really, really understand how it works. The what is happening uh, with Power BI when visualizing the data and doing the queries and all that stuff. So very, very quickly, you go to view. You, this, this is not a beta, nothing. You just need to go to view and performance analyzer and it will start. Um, you click on the start record and we are going to record two actions, right? Just, just so you can see, we don't want to make it messy for now. So we're going to click here and you see here cross highlighted and give us some timings and then we're going to click, I don't know, there. Okay, so now we have two actions and we want to examine more about these. So we're going to export the file that contains all the data about what happened in there. We're going to go in there, save. And uh, then we're going to go into the performance analyzer Power BI report. Of course, you're going to use Power BI to analyze the performance of Power BI. What else would you to use? Um, again, this is a limited version, so we will have to wait a little bit more before, uh, you know, a full disclosure happens when the Power BI team release all the information. Uh, but uh, if you click in here, it will take you to this video. Um, and what you need to do is you go in here at home, edit queries, data source settings. And no, you go here, you go edit queries, you go edit parameters. And in here, you have uh, to put the path to the JSON file that we just downloaded. I have it on my desktop, so you can see desktop and you see Power BI performance JSON easy. Now, I have added another parameter that is called name. And the thing is, you're probably going to do this on several files and you want to know, maybe you want to save it and, you know, uh, compare performance or something like that. So you want to know which JSON file this refers to. So I here you have the possibility to write the name of the report you're analyzing and then you can have like, I don't know, version five. You're probably going to have multiple versions if you're analyzing performance. Click OK. Apply changes. It will load something. Now, you know, Power Query and Power BI caches data very, very hard. So sometimes it's useful to just do a full refresh. So you just make sure that all the data gets in there. Okay. So the first tab and this Power BI report, it was not this. It was a, a raw version of this was show, um, shared by one of the Power BI architectures uh, for, for this performance analyzer. So I've just changed it a little bit. So it makes sense to me, basically. Um, but uh, what this is basically doing is just reading the JSON file. And the first thing I wanted to show when I'm at least because this is I'm going to, this is something that I'm going to use and I'm going to share it with you in case you find it useful. You'll go to uh, Power BI. No, just, you go to Curva.com and then in the membership downloads you have to be a member. That's all. You'll find this. Okay. And uh, what you see here is I have uh, the user actions that you see. Let me show you. This is a user action cross highlighted. We click on something and then cross highlighted. We click, we click on something here. So the first things you will see in black are the, um, the actions. What happened? What did the user do to trigger that update on the report? And then you will see the time it took to refresh the different elements on the page that were affected, obviously. Um, 
there are no totals in here because things did not happen serial in parve you know it, it it happens in parallel which means that there can be uh, different things happening at the same time so you cannot just sum these to get a total result if you would sum these you will get a crazy number let me show you if we go to uh, six seconds seven seconds it did not take seven seconds to upload you know to visualize the data so you cannot have the subtotals on just so you know uh, but we can see how long it took for each visual to visualize um, and uh, i have highlighted the ones that have the highest value for each group so here it was the sales by week number which if we come in here is this one and the other one is let me go in here it is year over year since previous year which is this little visual here okay and now that you know okay these are the ones that took the longest you can actually right click and then drill through and go to see what happened what took what components made that visual uh, perform so slow or slow slow in this case it was not slow but I, either way so there are two levels on this there, there are three components for um, of, on the power bi visualization uh, you have the report canvas the dse which means data shape engine and then you have the i think it's called model You know, it would be great if the bookmark also works on the, you know, that nowadays you can just click on the uh, label to be able to filter. Well, it would be great if that happened with the uh, bookmarks also. Come on. There you have it, the data model engine, okay? So there are three components. So the report canvas, and if you hover over, you'll see, is the one that hosts the, the visuals, the filters, and uh, retrieves the data and manages the user's interaction. So when you are clicking something, this is the report canvas that's doing all the work. It is also generating something called a semantic query. And semantic query is like some kind of, you know, query language to tell the data shape engine what kind of DAX queries it needs to run. Okay, so the report canvas is doing the heavy lifting. The uh, data shape modeling is um, translating the queries that are sent in into DAX queries. And then you have an analysis services, IS, which is the modeling data shape engine that actually executes the, um, we can go up in here. And this is stores the data model and runs the DAX query. So this is the one that holds the data and runs DAX. We've talked about this little thing a lot of times. Now, if you can see, the time that it took to execute the DAX query was 28 milliseconds. So if you see something that is bad, more often than not, you think like, oh, my DAX queries are running slow. Well, it could, but it could be also something else. Like, for example, here, you're going to see in most reports that report canvas is the one that takes the longest time. And the more stuff you have in there, guess what? The slower it gets. And I think that the, to be able to surface and visualize this is great because if you get an understanding that how it affects performance to put a lot of stuff in your canvas, you won't and you will gain in usability too. So the user will get a better experience if you just don't put a thousand visuals in there that move at the same time. Looks cool, but it's not usable. Okay. So I think that the, the fact that you can actually visualize it is super cool. Now, we are, here you have performance for visual year over year sales and previous year by ISO, which is, we talked about it, is this one, right? This is the little one that is taking the longest time when I click on a row on a matrix. So if you can go in here, this is that one. And you see DAX query 28, visual display 24, another 796. So it, ex it ex 
uh, spent most of the time in other. So what is other? Okay, we can see now what other is. Let's go back. So we have, let's remember that. We have 28 DAX query, 24 visual display. 24 visual display, 28 DAX query. So I have colored the ones that are shown on Power BI Performance Analyzer, which is these two. The other ones are other. And what is other? It says visual container lifecycle. What, what is that? So it says it tracks an update to a visual. So how long it takes a visual to update? It says tracks generating and executing the semantic query. Okay, so the report canvas has to generate the semantic query that the data shape engine will interpret and convert into DAX, and then it will go back and execute it and go back to the report. Because the report canvas, it does not understand DAX, it understands the semantic query. So this is the time it takes for generating and executing the semantic query. So it takes, to actually run DAX, it took 24, no, 20 milliseconds, but to execute the DAX and visualize it, you know, and run it and execute all that, no, not visualize it because that's something else. To generate and execute the semantic query, to be able to run the DAX queries, it took somewhat a second. Again, this is, these things happen in parallel, so it just, didn't take a second just for this visual to generate. There's a lot of things going on at the same time. And that's why it could be faster, but still, it's interesting. And then you have uh, execute the semantic query took 32 seconds, execute the query 13 seconds. So in this case, the only thing you can do is change the visual if that would be the issue. So DAX, not an issue at all. Who knew, right? So if you find that your reports are very, very slow and DAX is not the issue, you know that you have too much stuff going on in your report. So you should get rid of some stuff, do some drill throughs, and it would make this experience even better. You know, I could have actually crammed these two together with this one in one. I say, oh, cool, you have everything. Like, yeah, but the first is going to affect your performance for the second one is like where do you start here's super clear you start here you use your performance actions you find who the big offenders are and then you start analyzing them okay so yeah this is um this is basically all for now again if you want to have this file you go to curva.com you become a member completely free and um, you go to membership downloads at the download center and grab this thing. I will continue building as soon as the Parway team releases more information and whatever I come up for myself, I'll give it to you. And if you find something good, cool, give it to me. Okay, that's the deal. <laughs> okay, so um, it's all for today. We will be using these again on Tax Fridays, you know, this Friday's Tax Fridays. Uh, I have a cool use for these that is perhaps not what it was intended to, but anyhow, a cool use for it. I'm going to stop talking and I'll see you again on Wednesday, as always. Bye.